Hello. Oh, no way, bro. <laughs> no fucking way, dog. <laughs> That's not real, huh? <laughs> Man, what is, look, we do a formal intro, yeah, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just get it over with, yeah. all right? <laughs> That's how we normally start our interviews, let's get it over with. Right, hello <laughs> and welcome to Trigonometry. I'm Francis Foster. Oh, oh no. come on, dog. <laughs> you got to do better than that. I agree with you. Thank you. Sorry, man. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. You know what you're doing. <laughs> but you got to try harder, bro. <laughs> all right, so okay. I get... All right. Hello and welcome to Trigonometry. I'm Francis Foster. <laughs> I'm Constantine Kissing. And this is a show for you if you want honest conversations with fascinating people. Our brilliant guest today is already taking the piss out of us. It's the amazing American comedian Theo Vaughn. Welcome Bro, to Trigonometry. You guys have we call it autism. <laughs> I don't know what you guys call it, bro, but we got it over here. Everybody's got it. Everybody's got it. Every celebrity has it when they have a movie coming out. Right. <laughs> they get it like the week before, bro, they get autism and then the movie comes out and then they fix it or whatever, you know? It's good to be had, man. This is the gayest little microphone. It feels like a... <laughs> it's all up in your grill. Oh, it feels like a one, like a, like a, the weakest one-armed black kid is trying to give me a hug. That's what it feels like, dude. Like, if you go like this. Go black skill is so like, whoa. Somebody feed this boy and then bring him back to the hug ring, you know? Because he ain't ready for fucking real two arms. This dude ain't ready. Hug him with one arm. Would you rather go to jail for one year or go to jail with a Rubik's Cube and you can leave when it's done? Oh, man. How quick you think you can do a Rubik's Fuck, Cube? Fuck, bro, a science one, huh? I would rather... I'd go to jail for a year. I think it'd be great. These days, relaxing, get some reading done, you know, get in shape, you know. Maybe get beat up or raped up. Yeah, get some diverse friends. Okay. How, how long would it you to do a Rubik's Cube? A Rubik's Cube? I bet I could probably do it in a week. <laughs> but, you want, but you want the year in jail. So you could get out yeah. in a week, but you'll take the year. Oh, dude, I'd love to have some time to just relax, honestly. And I'm a pretty simple man, as long as, yeah, if I'm in there. I heard the lights are on at night, though. That would be the part I, that I wouldn't do. You know, I grew up in a mixed neighborhood, dude. And uh, black people don't really know. They don't differentiate between indoors and outdoors. <laughs> What do you mean? Outdoors can be indoors, dude. What do you mean? Outdoors can be indoors. Black person, you can put them outdoors, and you put them indoors. Same volume levels, same speed. There's no inside voice. There's no. There's zero inside. There's voice. no etiquette when you go indoors. Well, they just don't. I don't. I don't think they believe in like a lot of structures and. I don't know if I don't want to say woodwork, but I want to say overall that they the difference between indoors and outdoors when it comes to it's most. So black incredibly, people, it's so incredibly vaguely racist. It's so like, funny though. <laughs> Virgin power is so strong, bro. Is I saw it a virgin. Wild. Oh, dude, that's crazy. Oh, uh, a uh, somebody parked a Volkswagen Rabbit on this guy's leg one time outside of our schoolhouse, and I saw a virgin fucking <laughs> lift it right off his leg. Wild, yo. What? And this was in fucking. Who knows when it was? Every scene is from like the movie Powder. <laughs> Every scene, it's amazing. What are you talking about? Every dude? scene you of your life, stories like, like that. I've never seen a virgin pick up a car. Yeah, they pick up AK-47s now. That's the problem. <laughs> Virgins now are picking up AR-15s. I was young. People were born. You'd have a buddy missing a, uh, you know, you'd have a, you'd have a buddy missing a clavicle. You know, you'd have a friend. You know, it wasn't crazy to shake somebody's hand and only feel four on them. You right. know. It was a different time. Somebody, people were uneven. Right. Somebody missing half a Cossacks or half of a damn, you know, have a square occipital, orbital entrance. You know, somebody, you know, have a damn square eye. It was just different times. People had rabies. Uh, what else? They had, people had diseases. Uh, you, you know, I grew up, they had just the tail end of polio. You'd see somebody dragging themselves down, you know, dragging... You know, maybe they had a cane or a cane. They, somebody got them a cane that was too short. And so they, you know, somebody out there short caning. Just barely. Might as well just, I mean, look like, you know, might as well just drag themselves. If you're short caning, it looks like you're doing damn magic. Like you're out there just, you know. Right. I remember I got on a school bus one day and the man didn't even take us to school. He just drove us around. <laughs> and, uh, Fuck off. Swear to God. And then just drove us back home eventually. <laughs> What's wrong with him? He didn't say anything He's either. Probably drunk. I remember the first time we had a conversation, you were talking to somebody about being a kid and playing gay chicken. Oh, yeah. You know, when I was young, we used to play this game called 
gay chicken they called it uh i didn't name the game but i was you know i i the game existed and then i, I and then i existed um <laughs> was it your uncle but, was it a neighbor well the game was you you and a buddy you'd grab each other's wiener right penis they called it in those days some of you guys call it penis but yeah. uh yeah you grab it and the first person to get an erection lost the game right <laughs> <laughs> So it's like it's arm wrestling for a sim- It's the stupidest fucking game. No, it's not. No. It's it, simple. I mean, it is. Did you win? Did is, you ever dude. win or did you huh? lose? Did you lose a lot or did you win a lot? Oh, I did real well one season. Uh, <laughs> what is the gay chicken season? What Does that go from? It's more it? of a win. It's more, I would say it's an autumn game. <laughs> yeah. I would say it's kind of. Well, that's so, I think I, I can see it now. The, all the leaves changing colors. <laughs> and just the two of you. What, do you play with neighbors or the teams? No, or? you just got them. I mean, we only had about seven guys that played in our little bracket or whatever. But they had. You know what's um, weird? You know what's interesting? You have seven guys in your bracket, yet it's a two-man game. Yeah. And so there's an odd number. <laughs> oh, yeah. Does it have to be two-man? Can't you, like, do it in a circle? <laughs> oh, come on, lady. No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. That's y'all are messed what up. Y'all are first. Best. It'll cure down syndrome, bro. I beat it. <laughs> you beat it. There was a lot of rumors in my town that I beat down syndrome. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, that's inspiring, man. <laughs> that's how I felt when I heard them. Because I didn't start them. And so, yeah, we 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 go. We first of all, we get to the airport and they're taking us on a jet. I mean, this thing, Puma put us on a jet. And it's, uh, I mean, this thing was long. This thing had two bathrooms in it. And I pissed in both of them because, you know, that boy, if there's, I'll piss in it. You know what I'm saying? I'm pissing at each end of the yard, baby. And I'll let the devil do the laundry, baby. You know what I'm saying? I'm pissing when I get in something. That's always who I've been. You know, as a child at night before I go to bed, I'd piss off each side of my bed and I'd piss around it. I'd stand on my bed and urinate around it just uh, to keep, you know, whatever bad stuff could come get me to keep it away. Dude, I want to start focusing on learning more Spanish so I can, uh, I want to do a special. Uh, in like just a, Spanish? Yeah, like in Nicaragua or something. My dad's from Nicaragua. So I want to do a special in Nicaragua. Yeah. Your dad is not Nicaraguan. I'm, uh, <laughs> we might have to edit that out, dude, because Nicaraguan? that's. Nicaraguan? That time closer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go one more time, bro. I want to see how racist this ends up. Nicaraguan. Whoa, bro. A couple of guys just shut up at the door, dude. Dude, Relax, how do you bro. say it? You can't even speak on Kratom, can you? <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Uh, you say it, Nicaragua. Bro, you are not <laughs> Nicaraguan. <laughs> yes. Bro, my father's from Bluefields, Nicaragua. I'm who, Polish, who Nicaraguan. The fuck lied to you? No, you're not. <laughs> Bro, my, uh, You're a Hawaiian and from Denver. <laughs> hey, shut up, bro. <laughs> no, I knew, dude. I mean, you know, I grew up around some fucking real crazy poor white people. You know, the dude, no arms. They had a dude in our town, no arms, used to fucking fight everybody. You know, that dude. You know what I'm saying? He'd get you in that lurch. He would catch you with his between his chin and his chest. <laughs> he would fucking snack you like a snake. We were talking about this dude. His I, boy I, Gert was his name. I, and I, he I, would I, just get you like that, bro. Yeah, and he'd choke no- you down. He had no arms. No arms at all. And he'd fight anybody, dude. And he would choke you. He would. So if you went to punch him, how would he block? Oh, bro. He'd spin out of it. He'd spin, he'd duck, he'd dodge. The dude had. Fu- I mean, he just. And would he catch your hand with his neck? Huh? Would he catch your Oh, hand? he would just lurch at you. And, bro, the thing is, here was the. Oh, you know what? If he hits you with that shoulder, you're going down. Uh, yeah, part of it. Because the big move yeah, was that choke. He would get. He would catch you like this. Where would he catch you? Your hand? In your neck. He would catch you neck to neck. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Oh, uh, once he got you neck to neck, Gert Yuva, this whole family, the whole family was fucking he could choke you out. Psychos, bro. Brother had sharpened half of his teeth on one side of his mouth, dude. These people would fuck you up. One of the kids was in a wheelchair, or just they never taught him to walk, I think. I don't even think he was crippled, they just never taught him to walk. And so the other brother would carry him on his back everywhere, like a backpack, dude. And didn't even give a fuck. Unfortunately, almost knocked this young lady up that was from South Dakota. And she lived on a reservation, yeah. Oh. And she, like, threatened to have the baby. Oh, um, damn. How old were you? 37. Wow. This year. <laughs> it was this year. And she wouldn't even be cool. She wouldn't. She threatened to have the baby, dude. And I just <laughs> met her at a motel. <laughs> yeah. Which fictional character would you love to be? 
beat the shit out of, dude. I don't know if I can beat a lot of people. I think I could beat that dude from The Mask. You ever seen that movie Mask with Rocky Dennis? I could fight that dude, I bet. Who else? Probably Rosie O'Donnell. That's not a fictional character, that's a real person. Depends on who you ask, bro. <laughs> you know, you'll piss what you need right into the damn bed, milk. I used to piss that into the sheet. You know, lunch, I'd write, just piss. You'd wake up and I'd roll over and pull back the top sheet and I'd just, just cleanly pissed. Just damn, just wiener calligraphy come right out of me, lunch, right on the sheet, damn. So if you were a therapist, you could have pulled off that top every week. You could have seen what I needed. Lunch, uh, uh, field trip signature on document. That took me, I, that'd take me three nights to urinate that into the thing. But mom would be gone. I wouldn't have, nobody would be there to sign it for me. So I'd just falsify it. Dude, I was in Louisville one time. I came out of a show. They had a big group in a limousine. They invited me to go to an after party with them, right? I was like, I'm only coming if my boy can come. And they're like, who's your boy? And I'm like, Le Cedric. They had a brother nearby, right? Wearing this <laughs> Louis Vuitton jacket, dude. Probably about 60% homeless, right? And they're like, that's your boy? And I didn't even talk to this dude, right? I was like, yeah, that's my boy. And like, all right, he can come. So I fucking walk over to him, look him right in the eyes. And I was like, what's up, man? I'm Theo. He's like, Le Cedric. And uh, I was like, all right, dude, I told these people you're my friend. You ever been in a limousine? He's like, nah. -uh. I was like, all right, come get in with us. Just act like you're my friend, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to a party. He's like, all right, man. So we go in the limo, bro. We're in there, hot chicks, dudes, people fucking. Little Cedric kept saying, we're friends. That's what he kept saying out loud, right? <laughs> kind of fucking not the best actor, bro. But did we get to this house party? It's a nice, cool fucking party, bro. I'm downstairs. I'm in the kitchen. Somebody's making us a drink. I'm talking to somebody. Fucking six minutes later, right here, fucking somebody scream. I hear a window break, right? Somebody comes running down. They said some dude just stole like four purses out of the coat room upstairs and fucking jumped out a window. That would have been me, Doug. And that was I... fucking Le Cedric, bro. Uh, and that was like, but, and everybody there was like crying and pissed. And some girl was like furious because all her tampons were in there or something. I remember she got pissed. She was a tough girl. She was like one of those, uh, what are those people that slide the thing on the ice, she said? Curlers? Curl. <laughs> yeah, she was a curler. And, uh, but I was, in my head, I was like, this is the best fucking night ever. <laughs> Dude, I, I could not, I just don't even think I could fight, man. I remember one kid attacked me once in school. It didn't go really well. I got attacked by a bunch of dogs. Uh, <laughs> dogs? That's a different animal. Yeah, but literally, still, literally, different animal. literally. Yeah, like, but how do you out fuck there. with a dog? I Two of them know. came back and attacked me on my birthday again a year later. <laughs> uh, on your birthday? Swear to God. When dude. they come back, they came back like it's this fool's birthday. Let's you take any bites? Uh, yeah, I took a couple bites, went to the hospital. It was my birthday. I remember I was 11 years old, and then at 12 years old, two of them came back and got me again. <laughs> like, they knew. That's what I'm saying, man. Animals are insightful, dude. If you were sent back to the Roman Empire with a fully charged iPhone, do you think you could take over the world, dude? <laughs> Fuck no, dude. I think they would probably beat you up. They would say you're gay, and they would beat you. <laughs> man, Mexican people work work hard as hell, man. I gotta be honest with you. Never, no complaining, just work hard. Dude, I went to a funeral of a Mexican guy. He climbed out of the casket, dug his own grave hole, and then got back in the casket, man. If I got to do something, for example, I need to build a picnic table or a, you know, an edible seating structure, you know, table. And I got, I got nine people to help me do it. If six out of the nine people are Mexican, bruh. Andale, Papa, we getting it done. I'm telling you that, dude. I'm telling you that we're going to be eating lunch early as a group. Look, I saw a Mexican guy cut down a tree, make it into wood bars, bars of wood, and then use the wood to make a, he, he built a damn tree with it. And es inspiracional. Papa. This guy want to make fun of my haircut. We going to see. That's not a haircut. That's not a haircut. That's all you got left, bro. Oh. Woo! That Yo, shit is slick. CBS no, wants to know. No, no thoughts. Chris, you look like a deaf guy that goes to the gym. You look like, dude. 100%. My friends are alcoholics. And 
I'm competitive. <laughs> so I have a couple tequilas, right? And tequila, let's be honest, like pouring Mexico right into your body, okay? I mean, make you jump a fence, make you buy a gun, make you run across a highway with your family, make you knock a woman up, make you knock a woman down, okay? <laughs> Ole, Janet, you know? Dude, I got jumped one time after a football game by five black dudes. I don't know if you ever fought five black dudes at night. <laughs> Just imagine you're fighting five black dudes, right? Now close your eyes. <laughs> now how many black dudes are you fighting? As many as your imagination can hold. I mean, I remember... If I saw like, a one, I remember my buddy's mom had a brassiere one time that she would leave hanging in the bathroom and I'd just go in there. And to just, the brassiere? Oh, bro, I would tie it around my fucking <laughs> face so that each cup like came over, like oh, right, some weird left shit. a little bit of nose, but the nostrils were covered. So it's, just the middle. Oh, this is. Just that name. This, bro, it's that almost like huff. that Versace, the killing Versace shit. Where What's you, that, your like, nose taint? What is this thing, that little part? Uh, I don't, your septum. No, it's your naint, isn't it? A little <laughs> bit. Gotta be. A little bit. You'd cover up so you can almost restrict your breathing. Oh, bro. So I had to breathe solely through these fucking just, these straight up titty Booby shields. Holders. Yeah. yeah. Oh, those, That's what you used to like, huh? Those fucking milk holsters. Bro, I could smell the milk. I could smell the skin. I could smell the nipple. I could smell the children. I could smell all the years of my buddy growing up. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? bro? I could smell it all, dude. Wow. And it would go straight into <laughs> my head. Creepy. And that dude, I would jerk when I was when I was young, when I'd masturbate, I'd pass out. Mr. Joe hey. videotaping this. Hey, <laughs> hey, Theo, Theo, I, okay, look, can you we gonna role play, all right? All right. You my girl, and you just gonna break up with me. Oh shit. Just break all up right. with me, all right? Just break up with you? Yeah. Can I I'm just asking, can I use the N-word or not? I, I, hey. No, I'm just saying, I would always. I mean, the, hey. Theo, I don't care, but when we step out of here, I can't help you. Okay. <laughs> but you, use it at your discretion. Okay. Do whatever you want. Hey, Ellis. Hey. <laughs> Hey, hey, what's up, baby? What's going on? You know what the fuck's up, boo. My little. <laughs> baby, why are you censoring the word nigga? You know you saying nigga. That was a call came in. I ain't censoring shit. I know you've been out there with Mr. Joe petting them fucking white animals. What? What the? What? Baby, what? I know you been out there with Papa Joe, petting them little fucking honky Muppets. <laughs> Shonda, you crazy, baby, look. Um, Not as crazy as your homeless ass is. I'm out this relationship, my... So, so then I just got into stand-up, and I always like making people laugh. Like, I used to do a yeah. similar thing when I was a child. At the lunch table, we'd get some kids who were mentals or a couple of them might have been mentals and a couple of kids that were well you know and we get there and sit them to make them drink milk and then tell <laughs> jokes and do stuff and t tell one of them just blew milk out of their face <laughs> you know and if you get some straight up just a couple mentals boy some straight up sawed off humans you get them to do you get them to for straight up blow leche out their dome dude that's america right there oh. you know what i'm saying <laughs> And that's when I knew, I was oh, like, oh, man. I got some kind of a gift here, you know? I almost blew the throat out of this one boy. Oh, yeah. Almost threw the, this, Jesus. almost blew, blew the throat out of this, this one boy named Tot, T-O-T -T was his name. <laughs> kind of a bad name, too, to be mentally challenged. But also easy for him to spell. And, I'm not joking, that's what his father said. And, um, easy for him to spell backward and forward. Same name, Tot. So uh, that's oh true, man. God. Was this guy's real? His name was Todd. Yeah, <laughs> Why are you so laughing at him? It's just a funny sounding name. That's all. I'm yeah, sorry. You're right. Yeah, you're It so was pretty funny, yeah, I guess. Todd. Yeah, well, you know, let's Tot. talk about Todd. Sometimes like, he would just say T O T uh, was his name, but I yeah. knew it was Todd. Yeah. He would try to spell it out, and, you know, like he was tricking me. How long would it take for you to drink all the water in an above ground pool? 
Oh, man, this is fucking good, dude. I don't know, man, probably... I bet a year and a half. It's a very solid answer. You'd be surprised how many people are like, three days. Oh, no way, dude. Bro, and also, you can't drink consecutively. You can only drink about a gallon straight before like, the electrolytes in your body switch up and you can die. So, Dude, I drank a gallon at my buddy Tim's house one time. Fucking went to take a nap. Bro, pissed on his floor. 12 by 12 square foot room, dude, and the pool touched all four walls, bro. I don't know if I had that winter body type. You know, I got that thick upper crust. You know, I have the, uh, everybody knows I got the heart of a lesbian. My father told me that when I was very young and even wrote it one time at a napkin on a bar over there at Tony Padoni's bar and over at the Stinkin' Onion, which were a couple of small outfits over there near us. He would write it on a napkin to remind me a couple of things about myself I needed to remember. <laughs> go get like taco vodka used to be the kind of vodka that we would drink it was just like this off brand in our region like todd's almost uh yeah probably like something like that just whatever. like whatever every place had their own little local brand or whatever and this this was called taco and so you go get a fifth of taco or whatever so one time i'll pull up by the um gas station and they had this man and i was thinking oh this guy will buy some vodka he looks like he drinks some vodka and it was daytime you know it's probably maybe 11 a.m so I, I pick it. I say, hey, man, will you get us some liquor? He said, yeah. I said, all right, here's the money. You got to go in and get the liquor. Come back out and get in the car. It was kind of you had to give exact directions to. Yeah, otherwise, you know? otherwise you're going to deviate from the plan. I buy like some fucking uh, Slim Jims and a pack scratch of cigarettes. Off, yeah, scratch shoes, offs. Shoes, fucking the, the dice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah do come out with yeah, shoes. Yeah, fucking, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, he gets back in the car. He's got the liquor. And that's when this dude told me, he's like, you know, I'm the headbutton champion in the world, right? <laughs> Last thing you want to hear from, I'm talking this guy, the, the only th man I've ever seen, yeah. He had that thick head. Oh. <laughs> this guy's head was probably made by that shoemaker, right? <laughs> he had that kind of head. He had a shoemaker. smaller than Chin's head. Chin's head has a dome on him. It was like Chin's head with another all Chin's forehead. head on top of but it. All yeah. forehead? <laughs> oh, yeah, but all, all forehead, forehead, dude. God Yeah, damn. it was that John the Snowman. It was like stacking up a couple of Chin's heads, <laughs> right? This guy had just... Like you could see his, ne you could hear his neck. If you put your ear up to his neck, you could his his neck would be like, "Man, I'm tired," you know. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah. And he was headbutting people. No, he goes, "I'm driving us off." He has the vodka, and all my I want the vodka from him. Right? You're trying to get fucked up. And he goes, "You know, I'm the headbutting champion of the world, right?" And this dude's homeless. Okay, so. <laughs> Did you say, I didn't know there was a competition oh, for yeah. that, sir? And this is before they had it. This is way before. This is uh, 20 years before Kimbo Slice, right? Yeah. And this man looked exactly like Kimbo Slice, right? But, but with, white? With a two-story head. Oh, he's black. But white or black? But black. black. All right. 100% black. And he, so next thing you know, he goes, you know, I'm the headbutton champion of the world. And you start to see him kind of just looking at me as I just feel like suddenly. He was sizing up your dome. Yeah, suddenly <laughs> I'm looking forward driving and he's looking directly at me, right? You feel there it. is no us. We're not going anywhere anymore. He is just in the car with me. And uh, and so I pull, uh, and he goes, do you want, he goes, do you think you could beat me? And I knew, <laughs> but when he said, do you think anything at that point, I'm already thinking about. of the cops. I'm thinking of my funeral. About. I'm thinking of dude about. in the back. Get it! I'm, I'm thinking about yeah. I'm gonna fuck yeah. out. But you can't just get out of a car when you're driving it. <laughs> and that's one of the issues with cars. <laughs> is that you have some responsibility to stay in there and at least pull Especially it over. Especially if it's yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, st I pull over because I'm not going to get knocked unconscious while I'm moving forward. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a fucking idiot. Yeah. So this dude, he goes, you want to know? And he, I know he couldn't even hear me anymore. Though. I'm saying no. He's seeing red. Oh, yeah. It, for him, it's game time. <laughs> yeah. It's game time dude. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm saying no in different ways. I'm saying no in different languages. And you can tell it's not registering in his head. And he just lines me up, right? And just hit me as hard as he could with his fucking head, bro. Yeah, knocked me completely unconscious. Only been knocked out twice in my life. Once was actually about three weeks ago when I fell into the sofa when I was wrestling with some children. The other time was when this dude, the self-proclaimed headbutton champion of the world, fucking put that one-hit sleeper on me, bro. Here's the crazy part. He didn't even touch me with his hands. <laughs> <laughs> Did he leave the vodka at least? He didn't he even dipped out. Huh? Everything was gone, dude.
everything was going. He's homeless, though. Yeah. That's the champ, though. <laughs> that's, the thing. that's the champ. Yeah, How think. many people can say he got knocked out by the champ? It's a <laughs> kind of an honor, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and of- my first thought was, dude, that dude is the champ. <laughs> And my first thought. That's a champ right there. No doubt that man's a champ, champ right there. Yeah. We had a teacher. I remember he drew a picture of a wiener ejaculating on what? the chalkboard. He like kind of described, like <laughs> he told us what the feelings would be like. We wouldn't be able to handle it and stuff. And then he drew the, the ja- ropes. Yeah, the ejaculate just. Was he like <clears throat> making the noise with it? I do remember it was one of those double chalkboards. Like, Here comes a big one. Oh. <laughs> he like remember, walked it. Yeah. <laughs> I remember he would put the marker on the board and and then walk it across <laughs> yes, the board. That's crazy. It was pretty crazy, man. And he wore the shortest shorts, too. He died, man. Derek Ustner was his name or something. And I think his son might have died, but he died. <laughs> his son died, too? I don't want to say that, but I'm pretty sure. And he had the biggest mustache. His mustache came over both lips. So it was like some of the words, oh, you just fuck. had to guess what they were. Some people thought he was black. People didn't know what was going on. You know, it was <laughs> dicey. We just couldn't understand what he was talking about. It was crazy. You know, it was just different times yeah. back then. Um, it was different times. Dude, they right. had one kid in our in our t- in our neighborhood who, uh, his dad was a Elvis impersonator, right? Uh-huh. But in a small town, like you don't work much. You know what I'm saying? Like, if they only have 1,100 people in town, nobody needs a fucking Elvis impersonator. You yeah. Know? <laughs> For what? And he was really just a drunk, you know. And he was hiding behind the costume. <laughs> and uh, but around Christmas they'd let him dress up like Santa. The city would pay him, and he was a seasonal greeter. He would fucking greet people by the train station. They were like, "All right, he can pull Elvis off. I'm sure he can do <laughs> <guess>, Santa." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, and he fucking. I remember he made his son a wooden shirt one time for fucking. Uh, <laughs> what? Yeah, Hold on a minute. For Christmas. Out of what do plywood. you mean a wooden? <laughs> he made this boy Nathan, bro. He made little Nathan a fucking wooden shirt because I remember holding half of it up when they fucking nailed him into it. They had to, they had to nail him into the shirt. Yeah, it was a plywood shirt. Couldn't dude. slide it over. And I'll, I'll be honest all. with you, dude. We fucking <laughs> and he loved it, dude. It was like the only thing his dad ever made him, probably or got him. I remember he was fucking crying and fucking tears on top of the fucking plywood. Wood. Yeah, it was ply, but it was wood and was it, it was sanded. Uh uh-uh, uh, it was rough. <laughs> A rough shirt, dude. And uh, kids are throwing darts at him. Oh, shit. dude! I remember we drew, arrows. We drew a bunch of swastikas on it one oh time. Oh my what? god! What do you mean one time? Do you wear it all the time? Uh, you ruined that yeah, shirt. Wore, I mean, Which he wore did. a couple days in a row. That was, was like, I mean, it's tough to get shirt. on and off. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, like, right. you know how hard I fucking worked on that shirt. <laughs> but over the summer, a fucking hornet's nest got under one of the fucking. Uh... Shut the. <laughs> Swear to God. <laughs> when he kept it outside or something. Yeah, they, they kept the it in the garage. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> something got in it. That's what I remember. Anyway, I'm trying to think of what else. It could have, it could have been a, you know, rats, but I think it was hornets. And then there was a rumor when I was about 14 that there was an Asian boy. There was a rumor there was an Asian boy about 17 miles away from us. <laughs> and me and two of my buddies, one of them who had a bad neck, his fellow had a pretty bad, you know, that fifth appendage, the neck. People don't think about it. You got to strengthen it. And his was real lean, barely hold his head up. He almost had to, he almost had to walk around like this and also hold his head up with one of his arms. But he and I and another kid, uh, Got together and decided we want to go see this Asian, you know, this rumored oh, Asian. Right. Yeah, yeah. So we saved up money. We cut grass for about six weeks and saved up money to get a taxi. Just Went, to see this guy? Yeah. Okay. Went to Slidell, Louisiana to uh-huh. go visit him. And Well, you just went to his house? No. It was the oh. address that we got. Oh, you, you, how'd you get this address? Dude, you can get information. Okay. <laughs> okay. And this is back before the internet, too. Uh-huh. So this is when you'd ask around. Yeah. And then guess a little. Mm-hmm. And we uh, we went to see him and tried to go see him, but it was just a uh, oh. it was a uh, Chinese food restaurant. Oh, he's a Chinese guy. It wasn't a real Chinese person. It was just I think some kind of white people in hats, and it was like uh, <laughs> I don't know, it might have been like a Mexican Jewish guy running it. Oh, that's weird. But it wasn't any no real Asians. So it was just a myth. So we went back, man. It cost us about $70. Oh, jeez. Um, and then I had some abandonment issues, actually, when it came to Asians for a long time because of that. And then they kid named Jason Desport that showed up when I was in junior high school. And people used to always, people they had this group at the time called Whites Against Mexicans. And people would attack him sometimes, even though he wasn't Mexican, because he was like closest thing we had to a Mexican. He was, he was Asian. Pretty much. What, what was that like? 
Oh, my dad was old, man. My dad was uh, 70 years old when, uh, when I was born. Wow. Um, <laughs> is that right? Thank you for laughing at my daddy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's right, he really was. Uh, which, my mom was 32, which basically makes me a product of, uh, of loose skin and loose morals. Uh, <laughs> here. Yeah. Uh, but it was cool though, like the quality time we would spend, like after, uh, after I was born, uh, my dad had a stroke, uh, so we were both learning to walk at the same time. <laughs> we'd, have, like, we'd have like little races for cookies, you know? And, uh, <laughs> And uh, we <laughs> we play games like catch or don't. <laughs> and uh, and my favorite is Dad sleeping, or is he no longer with us? <laughs> this is a crazy question. Is you can vape inside? Mm. Most people look at you and be like, "Let me hit it." All right, I don't yeah, care. yeah. Most I think most people just don't care. But like, it imagine lighting up a cigarette it. inside of a cheesecake factory. They'd be bro, what the I'm fuck. I'm gonna call the on? FBI for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, because vaping people usually blow it down their pant leg or blow it the like shirt, yeah, the turtleneck oh, out really? somewhere. Yeah. yeah, And there's even shirts I saw where it's made for vaping, secretly vaping. <laughs> it's a wetsuit. Really? It's like a uh, vaping shirt. I know that they have absorb... pocket tees that hold your vape in the corner. No, I'm talking about hold the fucking smoke. Oh homie. damn, that ghillie suit. I'm dude, there was a dude next thing. to me who didn't give a fuck on the flight. People be like, vaping on flights. Full. Smoking. That's a black dude, bro. <laughs> Just say what you want to say, though. <laughs> you know, sometimes you catch a boy in a neighborhood or something got a little bit of um, autism, you know, the tism, they say it. And if you give him a little hammer, you know, they had a boy in our area, this boy named Wild Jacob. You know, he'd run around and pick berries and everything in the summer. And, you know, when the berry bushes really started to flourish, you'd catch him out there with the blue, you know, the black dye on his hands picking berries and uh, and eating them. That's the problem. His mom gave him this little hat and he's supposed to put the berries in there, but he would have just eat them immediately. And he'd get home and he dude have, you know, 120 berries in his stomach. But uh, at one time, his uncle, I remember, passed through town or something, gave him a little hammer. And I mean, I swear to God. We thought we had a damn woodpecker in the neighborhood for probably four years. But while Jacob would just get off in the woods and he'd find him a little tree or something or a little, you know, area of hardness, maybe a fence board or, a, or granite, and he would just hit it with that hammer. You yeah. look like a guy that should be much whiter than you are. And you, and you know that. And you know oh, that. Yeah, boy. Yeah. What's the deal? Dude. Are you outside a lot? Huh? Are you no, outside I'm a lot? inside, man. Yeah. Part of my family's from Nicaragua, bro. And no. that's not a racial story. Yeah, my father's from Nicaragua. What? Yeah, Nicaragua, bro. Wow. Where my Nick Gar's at, huh? Well, <laughs> a little too close. Okay, yeah. <laughs> sorry. It's a, yeah, and hopefully the audio is clear on that. Yeah, it so is. People it's know. okay. Oh, okay. I, I got your back. <laughs> okay. There's a C in there. I want to thank everybody from F Fighter and the Kid. You know, I was a, uh, and that's a a podcast where they have this man who is a fighter, and he got. He got beat up and he got attacked a couple times and he couldn't fight anymore because his brain couldn't handle it. He was on the brisk of freaking getting that, you know, a brush with that tism. And so his brain, you know, told him, we got to shut it down. And so he quit fighting and he met up with this other man who's kind of aging, but he's, this, you know, a sweet, funny guy and he got strong legs, the other guy. And their names are Brendan and Brian and the podcast is called The Fighter and the Kid. And one of them uses moisturizer. And one of them needs moisturizer. Yeah. I have yeah, terrible. I have, ter I have bad skin. skin. 